Several years ago, my company did aerospace research for NASA at Ames Research Center in San Jose, California. They have a very powerful air traffic control, control tower simulator that they can use to evaluate improvements to existing airports, study new airports, and solve air traffic problems. Real controllers to uh, direct real pilots flying this aircraft that you see in, in this video. The real pilots fly the simulator from another room, but they are at a computer terminal, and each one can control two to four aircraft. So there's a lot of traffic possibilities. The interesting thing about the facility is it can simulate virtually any airport almost anywhere in the world. That's very cool stuff, especially if you're a researcher. <laughs> the toughest problem in airports is not landing aircraft and taking them off. The toughest problem is what do you do with them on the ground? There's a lot of them. They all need to go and get to where they're going to go, whether it's takeoff or a, a gate. And so they, you have to orchestrate that so they don't run into each other. This is really true at airports like Chicago O'Hare, Kennedy in New York, and this is Los Angeles that you're looking at. They all have multiple runways. They all have many taxiways. And those of you, like me, who have waited on a taxiway to either take off or get to a gate can relate to the problem. So orchestrating this aircraft dance is a bit of a challenge. But a local researcher had studied the problem, and he felt he had a fully automated solution, and it worked perfectly on his uh, laboratory. So they brought it out to Ames, put it on the simulator, and it worked perfectly. Then they introduced the human element, a controller and a pilot. <laughs> you get one of you's ahead of me, which is it? <laughs> it didn't take long for the simulation that was chugging along to slow down, and ultimately it ground to a halt. And here's the point. The simulation, the automation, worked exactly as it was designed to do, perfectly. What the designer didn't do, it didn't take into account the human decision process that other real people go through. And so the, cap the, uh, the uh, guy flying the airplane and the guy controlling the guy flying the airplane, who were used to being in charge, right, didn't trust the simulation. Trust is an important part of our daily lives. We trust our friends to be reliable and supportive. We trust our car to start when we want it to. And above all, we trust for all of our electronics to be available and work every time we want them to, whether they're charged or not. <laughs> so how do we define trust? What are the factors? Well, the dictionary definition works pretty well for humans. It is, it's a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability of someone or something. Not bad. But the definition uh, that two of the most prominent human factors researchers in trust and automation have come up with is probably more accurate for what we're talking about. The attitude that an agent will help an individual's goals in a situation characterized by uncertainty and vulnerability. The words to take away are reliability and uncertainty. Trust between humans is learned over time by association and by reliable behavior but it can be lost when those conditions are no longer true. There's evidence that most people believe that machines are nearly perfect. So that results in an initial trust of, uh, that's, that's pretty high. However, the moment those machines don't behave in a way that humans recognize as being reliable and appropriate, that trust can be lost. The pace of technology is astonishing. But the ability that we have to adapt to it lags way behind. The pace of research, however, is glacial, awful. So one of the most challenging problems with automation is stuff goes wrong. This is the cost of Concordia. 32 people lost their lives on, the, on this, uh, this wreck. And it happened because the captain didn't trust the navigation, 
of the, of the boat, took it over, took manual control, and he steered it into a rock. Okay, that's the serious part. It's possible to trust automation <laughs> too much. We love them, but they take us in funny places sometimes. It also makes for good TV. If any of you would ever watched The Office, you may have seen the episode where Steve Carell's character, Michael, trusted his GPS so literally he drove it into a lake. <laughs> Driverless cars can save lives. And Uber, Google, the uh, automobile industry, lots of people are involved. But Uber, the first car on your left, had a little problem. It missed six. I'm sorry, that's six. <laughs> Red lights in a test in San Francisco. The Tesla in the middle, there was a famous Florida crash where a truck pulled into the path of the car. The car could not recognize it, react to it quickly enough. And the guy lost his life. He even didn't take control of the vehicle, even though he was getting visual warnings to do so. And the cute one on the right, originally by Google, now it's called Waymo, and it, has, it is fully autonomous. If any of you know anything about autonomy, this is somewhere between level four and level five, and that's, there's the didactic part of the talk that's, that's done with. That means that you don't get to do anything except get in, turn it on, when you get there, you turn it off and you get out. But it has been pulled over by a cop <laughs> who was driving too slow. Pilotless airplanes had the potential to have safety benefits and economic benefits. This one happens to be from Airbus. But in a recent UBS survey, only 17% of the people responding to the survey said they'd actually fly on one. <laughs> and in truth, even if, if you would, they're still gonna have, need ground monitoring for the longest period of time because somebody needs to take over if something goes wrong in the air. Trust and automation can also evolve over time. How many of you, like me, counted your money religiously the first few times you used an ATM? Oh, come on, you know you did. I did, I still do sometimes. <laughs> and, but ultimately we get to the point where we realize they're pretty reliably gonna work all the time. So the common element in all of these things is that few, if any, designs take into account the human, and they particularly the human need for reduced uncertainty. But an advance of technology is going on no matter what, so finding a way to deal with this uncertainty is gonna be critical for the future. That requires more and better research, human-focused research, and a lot of the human computer, human machine stuff is going on today in academia and in, in industry. Uh, Microsoft and uh, Disney are two examples, but virtually none of it, none of it addresses trust. Trust and automation research is, however, strong in the Department of Defense, in fact, some is going on in our backyard at Wright-Patterson, where the Human Resource Laboratory has an office specifically chartered to do that kind of research. The Loyal Wingman program is a good example. Imagine, if you will, a manned aircraft, could be an F-35, but a manned aircraft flying and joined in formation by an unmanned aircraft, fully automated, capable of breaking off and executing a mission when this aircraft commands it to do so. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> so clearly, research in this whole area is behind the power curve, and it's lagging behind the pace of technology development. But wouldn't our lives be so much easier and more productive if we could count on some human touch in the automation we occur? There may be some hope. This reconnaissance vessel is called Sea Hunter. It is fully autonomous. It has human design elements that were programmed into it from the very beginning. 
It is programmed to obey all the laws of maritime operation and can operate worldwide. The difference is that although it can do maritime operation and it can determine right away with, between itself and other ships in the area, it does so with the knowledge that it can maneuver out of the way in a manner in which a human would maneuver, thus conveying trust to the other ships nearby. So I'm going to leave the last word to Elon Musk, where he said, artificial intelligence will be the best thing or the worst thing ever for humanity, so let's get it right. <laughs>